Hi and welcome to The Small Holding. Today I want to show you my essential kit for gardening. Every small holder, people who have allotments and gardener, builds up that kit which they use on a day-to-day -day basis. Today I want to show you some of the standard items I use but also some of the more unusual things that you might not have thought about. So come and join me. Hi, my name's Fiona and this is my essential gardening kit. I'm stood in front of our wonderful cottage and I'm quite proud of these flower beds but they need to be maintained. We also have a large herb bed, two greenhouses, a very large vegetable plot, a fruit cage and an orchard and all of that has to be maintained. So I've created this kit so I can easily move it to each of those locations and look after those areas. I want to show you what I've got because it might give you some ideas for your garden, allotment or small holding. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the basics. So this is the foundation equipment that most gardeners will have to maintain their individual areas. A good quality wheelbarrow and I'll show you this one in a bit more detail in a minute because it's different to most wheelbarrows you might have seen before. A good quality digging spade because I need this to cut through roots and compacted soil. It's a flat-ended spade with a good sharp blade on it. A digging fork and a Dutch hoe. So let me show you each of those in a bit more detail. This is my wheelbarrow and I think it's really, really practical. It's different to most other wheelbarrows you might have seen because it has two wheels at the front. Most only have one single wheel. Now what I found with wheelbarrows in the past with one wheel is that once I've got a lot of weight in the bucket, it can easily tip over and I can find it quite hard to move it around. But with the two wheels, it makes it far more stable. It's made by a British firm called Bulldog and this model is called a Bison. We do have a larger one called the Mammoth from the same firm and that's the one that my lovely husband prefers. But I like the smaller compact version. I find it much easier to move around the small holding. This is one of the vegetable beds where I've been growing carrots and in amongst them we do have some weeds and this is where the three essential pieces of equipment come in really handy. Let's start with the garden fork. Now the fork, I actually use this to go into the soil underneath the carrots and lift them up to loosen the soil so I can lift up carrots without actually damaging the root. And here I've got some lovely baby carrots which I can now take away, clean up and I'll probably can these. The next piece of equipment that I would actually use is the flat-ended spade with that lovely sharp blade on it. Because in amongst the carrots we have some of these weeds. Now the problem with those is they are very very deep rooted and let me just demonstrate with the fork what happens when I try and dig them out. They just go straight through the prongs, no effect whatsoever. So this is where that spade comes in really handy. So I can dig right down underneath and there we are. I've got the root out and I'll dig again and I'll dig deeper and make sure that I've got every part of that weed out so it doesn't grow again. The final piece of equipment that I want to look at is the Dutch hoe. Now the wonderful thing about the Dutch hoe is it's got this flat blade just like the spade and it's nicely sharp. And what I use this for is for shallow rooted weeds on the top like this little thing here. And by using the Dutch hoe and getting it underneath, I've loosened the roots associated with that so I can now get rid of it. Don't laugh, this isn't a fashion statement. This is actually a very, very practical bit of kit for me. It's a builder's tool belt that I've adapted to carry around all of my gardening equipment. Now, I have a big problem as a gardener. 
and I leave tools accidentally all around the garden. I can't tell you how many times I've actually lost trowels, but then I find them 18 months later in a compost bin because I've accidentally put them with a load of weeds that I've pulled up during weeding. So this helps me make sure that I don't lose anything. As soon as I finish with a piece of equipment, it's safely stored back in one of these pockets. So let me show you what I actually carry around in this belt. There's some staples that I always keep in this tool belt and the first staple is a good pair of gardening gloves. Now at the moment I'm just wearing lightweight cotton gloves because it's a wonderful glorious hot summer's day. In winter I've got a fleece lined pair which are normally used by people who work in refrigerated environments but for now lightweight cotton gloves are perfect. The next thing I carry around is a transplanting trowel. Most trowels that you'll see have rounded ends and are much wider. For me, a transplanting trowel is much more adaptable. It's tapered and it has bladed edges. Now what that means for me is in beds like this, where I've got these specialist onions growing quite close together, I need to get between the rows and dig up some of these weeds. And it means the transplanting trowel can easily do that without disturbing the roots of the plants I want to keep. And I can get these weeds out very, very easily just by levering them from below. This is my essential trowel. This is some of our sweet corn. Now you might be looking at it and thinking that doesn't look like sweet corn because usually they're upright stalks. But here we've actually tied the tops together in a wigwam arrangement. We live in a county with very very high winds and sweet corn doesn't cope too well with high winds so the wigwam arrangement makes it much much stronger and it means we're less likely to have it fall over it and actually lose that sweet corn but it does mean in my tool belt I will always carry around a ball of string can't tell you how often it becomes handy not just for sweet corn but it also means that I'll carry around a little pocket knife just to make sure that I can get the right length of string at any given time because this is the onion bed, I'm going to show you a piece of equipment that I keep in the tool bell, which is a little bit more unusual and you may not have seen one before. And it's an onion hoe. It's actually a hand tool and it's got a little hoe end on it, which has got a good sharp blade. And it's designed to go between the rows on an onion bed. And as you can see, it's doing a very effective job of getting underneath these shallow rooted weeds so I can easily take them out and weed this bed. I'm going to show you the piece of equipment that I use the most from this tool belt. And it's actually this pair of secateurs. These gave rise to the tool belt in the first place because I kept losing secateurs everywhere. I ended up buying half a dozen pairs of this particular set and I still only ended up with one. I still find old secateurs in the compost bin. So how do I use them? Well, usually deadheading and these flower beds during the summer months, it's a constant round of deadheading. And here I've got this lupin which is actually finished flowering and now has great seed heads. I've let them dry to a large extent on the plant and that's partly because the birds love them but also because I want some of those seeds as well. So at this point where the pods are dry I just use the secateurs to cut this head off. I'll now hang it upside down in a bucket. The seeds when they're ready will drop into the bucket and now I've got seeds which I can use to plant more lupin plants for next year. As soon as the wheelbarrow is in use, I've always got two other items with me. One is this green gardening bag and the other is a 40 litre truck. Now the wheelbarrow just means that I can easily transport these two items around but I need to separate out woody type material that's going to be burnt from weeds and green material which is going to go into the compost bins to make compost for the following year and these two items allow me to do that. So the green gardening bag, you will have seen these in most DIY stores or garden centres 
and I just use it to line the inside of the wheelbarrow and it makes it very adaptable to just tip the woody material onto the burning pile when I've finished. The truck just holds that green material and the two can sit very nicely in the wheelbarrow keeping those items separate and it works for me. You might have noticed this Neela in a couple of the shots of this video and this is so useful to me and it does come with me everywhere when I'm weeding. I spend a lot of time weeding these vegetable beds and that means kneeling down on the ground to actually reach across and pull weeds out. Now, while this grass isn't that uncomfortable, having a soft surface like this is actually just better and it makes it so much easier. Now, this is the type of thing you find in the Sunday paper supplements, in those books of much stuff as we call them. And it's probably aimed at people that are a little bit older than I am, but my goodness, I find it incredibly comfortable and useful. So I do use it in another way because it can be flipped over to be used as a seat. So actually, if I want a proper break, I don't need to go back up towards the house. I can just stay here and sit properly. At the end of the day, it can be folded flat as well. So I do that and then store it in the wheelbarrow so it's ready for the next time I need it out in the garden. There are lots of other pieces of equipment which I use other than those that I've shown you that have a permanent place in my wheelbarrow. There are three pieces which do get used a lot at various times of the year. The first is this shovel. Now it's different to a digging spade because as you can see it's got a tapered end. What that allows me to do is for example dig into this pile of wood chippings so that I can easily get underneath, pick up a lot, pop it into the truck so I can transport it to wherever I'm going to use that wood chip as a mulch. We jokingly call this Papa's burying shovel after seeing it used by Ned Flanders in a Simpsons episode, but that's unique to us. This is a sprung rake which has lots of quite fine tines on them and I use this quite a lot during the year but it doesn't have a permanent place in the wheelbarrow and that's because it gets used intensively in various pockets during the year but never all the year round. It's used a lot in autumn because when the leaves are falling from the trees they can either threaten to kill the grass because there's lots of them covering every part of the grass or the threatening to short out the electric fence that goes around the chickens. So to make sure the chickens are safe, I do have to rake up all of those leaves. The other time that I tend to use it is when I use the smaller lawnmower at the house, which the mulching plate isn't very good. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, there's lines of grass clippings down this area of the field. So just to make it look a bit neater when I feel like it, is I'll rake some of these into a pile get them up, pop them into the trug, and then those can go into the compost heap. In contrast to a sprung rake, this is a soil rake, and it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's designed to break up big lumps of soil. So here you can see on this bed, I've got these great big lumps, and what I'm trying to do by passing the rake to and fro is turn it into this lovely fine soil. Once that's done, I can plant new seeds in here and their roots won't be distorted by these huge great big lumps. Well that's it, that's my essential gardening kit. I hope that's given you some great ideas. If you have liked this content, take a moment to give me a thumbs up below. If you're not already a subscriber, come and join us and hit the notifications icon and you'll get to know of any new video as soon as they're published. If you've got any questions for me or want to know anything, leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.